Well, coronary artery disease is really uh, an epidemic in this country. It has been for years, and it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's still on the upswing. As more and more of our population becomes diabetic and obese, uh, this disease is, is really not going to change until we really share with the public what we know is the causation of this disease. And then what we're doing is empowering the public to know how to absolutely make it so that this disease never has to occur. And in those where it is in existence, it never has to progress and they can begin to reverse it. It's interesting that uh, the reason we feel so sh sure about the, the, the power of whole food plant-based nutrition is that uh, right now in the, we in, the med in medicine have to sort of hang our heads in recognition of the fact that we have built a billion dollar industry uh, in this country around an illness that does not even exist in half the planet. I mean, if you were to try to practice cardiovascular medicine in Okinawa, rural China, the Papua Highlands in New Guinea, Central Africa, the Tarahumara Indians in northern Mexico. Forget it. You, you better plan on selling geraniums. <laughs> You're not going to have any patients with heart disease. Why? Because they all thrive on whole food plant-based nutrition. Well, that's, the, uh, that's the, simply the way that the medical profession has evolved here. We, uh, with all due respect to my cardiovascular colleagues, who I so admire for their uh, compassion, their caring, and especially their fund of knowledge. But there's never any essential knowledge about nutrition that is being taught in medical school, and even less in the postgraduate training of cardiologists. Yes, they do learn a lot about drugs and pills and procedures like stents and bypasses, but those are just sort of stopgap measures that treat symptoms and have nothing whatsoever to do with the causation of the illness. So the illness marches on. And uh, there's, there's a great deal of emerging data that are really quite clear about how it is that uh, we never, <laughs> we never have to have this disease, and if it does exist, why it never has to progress. Breast cancer is uh, interesting about its uh, formation, and interesting that there uh, obviously there seems to be ways that we do with whole food plant-based nutrition. We protect patients from having the genes that are going to turn on cancer are not inspired to turn on. As a matter of fact, the, uh, the genes that turn off cancer are enhanced by whole food plant-based nutrition. You have this combination of things. Actually, it was my friend uh, Dean Ornish that with prostate cancer pretty well uh, clearly uh, showed this. And he took patients with early stage prostate cancer, and indeed just put them on the whole food plant-based nutrition, and their disease was halted, and often actually <laughs> in the early stage cancers was somewhat reversed. And this is ex extremely powerful. Uh, this whole idea of epigenetics, about turning certain genes on, turning genes off. The cancer producing gene, you turn it off with whole food plant-based nutrition. The cancer producing gene you turn on with the uh, animal-based uh, Western diet. And <clears throat> I think that it's really rather uh, striking when you see that what happens to Japanese women when they migrate to the United States by the second and third generation, still pure Japanese-American, they now have the same rate of breast cancer as their Caucasian counterpart. I think the, uh, the saying that is easiest to remember is that genes loads the gun. 
but lifestyle pulls the trigger. 